Today I'm going to be showing you a method to take scrap aluminium that I got for free and turning it into pure aluminium round stock that can be used for lathe projects. Despite being homemade this round stock is actually quite high quality and as you can see there's very little porosity and very very few voids and blemishes in the metal. Obviously it's not going to be as high quality as properly professionally machined and cast aluminium round stock but it's still very smooth, very high quality and completely free. So the main advantages of this method is the aluminium is completely free and also you can make it the exact sizes for your specific needs and you can get it pretty much instantly, it'll maybe take you about half an hour to make the aluminium round stock that you need for a specific project. So the first step is a source of aluminium and ideally you want to get it completely for free or for as cheap as possible because if you are going to buy it for full value then you might as well just buy it in round stock form and just skip out this entire process. If you want to create really high quality round stock, it'll be worth knowing what grade of aluminium you're using, but I'm just using various different scraps and putting them all together and it seems to work fine. My main source of scrap metal for this project is an old aluminium ladder that is completely broken and I crushed it down with a hammer so that it would fit inside my crucible. In the past I've also used an old engine casing from a motorbike engine and that worked quite well also. The most abundant source of aluminium is fizzy drink or soda cans but they're not very good since they're not very pure and they don't create great results. They leave a lot of slag in the crucible and I've had troubles with that in the past. Once you've got your scrap aluminium you need something to melt it down in and this is going to be a crucible and a foundry and I've got tutorials on how to build this electric foundry and this steel crucible but it is quite difficult to build and it takes a lot of time and if you just want something quick and dirty that you can melt down your aluminium in there's a lot of different ways such as a charcoal forge which Grant Thompson the King of Random has a great tutorial on and I'll link that in the description down below as well as my two videos. For this method I want to try and remove all of the impurities from the aluminium, so first what I do is I melt it down and once the crucible is completely full I pour it into ingots. This leaves a lot of the slag behind in the crucible so I know that the ingots are pretty much pure aluminium. I cast the ingots just by pouring them into an old cupcake tray. You can make your own ingot tray out of angle iron or just use something like this. Once these have cooled I now have a nice supply of quite pure aluminium that is very good for casting. I can then put these back in the crucible and remelt them down into a molten form. While the forge is heating up and melting down the metal, it's time to prepare my mould. You basically want something circular that you can pour the aluminium in, and you can use a steel coffee can for this. It obviously needs to be something that's steel or above the melting point of aluminium, and it's easiest if it's a hollow tube that's very smooth on the inside so that you can hammer it out afterwards. As you can see, I've just got a piece of scrap steel in a vise, pressed hard against some fire brick so that it creates a watertight seal on the bottom. It didn't take long before my crucible was full with molten aluminium. Now they're molten, I'm going to try and further purify them by adding some borax flux and some sodium chloride, which is just table salt. The borax flux was purchased off eBay and hopefully it, what it will do is bind with the impurities and make them rise to the surface. It also makes the aluminium more fluid, less viscous and have a slightly lower melting point. The sodium chloride off gases as it boils off and creates lots of bubbles inside the aluminium and these will hopefully help to degas the aluminium because as it melts it absorbs some hydrogen from the air which is not good. I use the end of a stainless steel threaded rod to remove some of the dross and oxide that's floating on the surface. Do this gently as to not add any more bubbles to the metal and I'd slowly scrape it off until it's shiny. This isn't completely necessary but is all another step to further purify the aluminium and get better results in the round stock. Once I have a nice pure metal it's then time to cast it. I take it over to my mould and simply just pour it in. I left it to cool for about a minute or so and tried to hammer it out. At this point it was still about 300 or 400 degrees celsius and it was really hard to drive out and my screwdriver was actually sinking into the soft hot aluminium. It turned out that all I had to do to get the aluminium to be easily removed was to cool it down in water so the aluminium would shrink and I could simply pull it out of my hand from the mild steel tube. Now it's time to turn this chunk of cast aluminium into proper round stock, make the edges all nice and smooth and sharp. To do this obviously you're going to need a metal lathe and I'm going to be using my 1940s South Bend 9C metal lathe and I've got a full video talking about this lathe if you're interested. If you don't have a lathe you can probably borrow a friend's or they might have one at a maker space near you or a machine shop that you might be able to use for a little bit. The turning on this project is pretty much as simple as it gets, you just face it and then turn down the edges until you get to pretty much smooth metal on the inside. I like to give mine tailstock support even on a short piece like this just because my chuck jaws aren't very long. I find that you only have to take off about 1mm from either side until it becomes completely smooth metal. 
I was originally using some cheap carbide tools for turning and they weren't working very well since they were made for cutting steel, not this soft aluminium, they were leaving an absolutely terrible finish even with really light depth of cut. So I then decided to ground my own high speed steel tools just on my bench grinder and it turned out really nicely, I made it very sharp and with a very small end radius and it cut very well and left a much smoother surface finish. After the first one turned out quite nicely and it was quite a nice small solid piece of aluminium, I decided to make another one and I wanted a larger one, so I made a much larger crucible out of scrap steel. As I was melting it down, I thought it would be nice if I could try and recycle some of the turnings, so I wrapped them up in aluminium foil and pushed them into the crucible. It worked alright, but they were covered in a little bit of oil from the lathe and it created a bit of fire and it was a bit dirty, so I don't think it's really worth it. This time when I cast the aluminium into the pipe, it filled up the entire pipe and despite it being a large piece of aluminium, it still slid out really easily. So this is what my three pieces of round stock look like once I've finished making them and I did quite enjoy making this type of round stock and I really enjoy using my lathe and I'd like you guys to recommend me some more projects that I can do on my lathe since I really like using it. Unfortunately with the small chuck that I've got at the moment the largest diameter that I can turn is about 50mm because I don't have reversible jaws and if you guys know where I can find a good website to buy some reversible jaws for my chuck please put a link in the comments down below. So thanks for watching guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this quick little video about how to make round stock. I've got some more cool projects coming up to do with casting and if you have any more good recommendations for what you think I could cast with my new electric forge then please leave them in the comment section down below. If you want to help support my channel and get early access to videos you can pledge to me on Patreon and you get up to 5 days early access to all new content that I post, plus updates on future projects. Also if you want to see what I'm doing in between videos you can follow me on Instagram for free.